welcome to another episode of Chat E. Our Sunday episode was moved to tonight, so if you're thrown off or, you know, realize things are a little different, that is why. Hi! Okay, there we go. <laughs> Hi, Billy. Hi, Chris. Hope everyone's well. Oh, girl, you got this. This is so fun, guys. This is one of my favorite people on the planet. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> you got it. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I like was just looking at myself and I was, this is like my teacher attire from the day I haven't changed yet. And I was like, oh my gosh, I still have the whole vibe going on. So my, I work from home and don't have to look nice outfit. That's you look how... beautiful. You look wonderful. So oh, lovely. Well always so um i'm gonna give you a little intro this is actually really exciting because i normally like really prep for my chat ease at least do a lot of research on my guests and all these things and i'm like okay what am i gonna ask them what do i want to do but i was just like this is literally one of my favorite people on the planet this is gonna be so lax so chill and we're just gonna make things happen so excited for it ready so hi everybody welcome to the next episode of chat e chat e is an opportunity for young entrepreneurs professionals and content creators to kind of share their story what they have going on motivate others and just be encouraging uh last this past year has been really hard and crazy because of quarantine but a lot of people are changing their communities and doing good things for themselves so my guest this evening is one of my best friends in the world who I'm so thankful and blessed to know is the beautiful and lovely Riley Dixon. Um, we actually met in Spain when we were living abroad and were roommates and we bonded over that experience and over everything else in the world since then. Um, but Riley, we're gonna be talking about travel, um, just about self growth, and she can just tell you what she's up to in life. She's such a light in the world and it's just fabulous and wonderful. So I'm so glad that you were able to do this right and that we can talk. I'm so happy to do it. I'm always there to support you. I'm your biggest number one fan, so. <laughs> oh my gosh, thanks so much. Thanks. Hi, Morgan. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy right now. This is oh, this is so cute. No, yeah. Hi, Morgan. Oh my gosh. Hey, girl. <laughs> um, so do you want to just take a second and kind of introduce yourself? Sure. So my name is Riley Dixon, like Ellie said. I am from the I grew up in a small town um, about 45 minutes away from New York City. I have always had a passion for traveling and for a while I actually thought that I wanted to be an environmental journalist mm -hmm. so I went to school for journalism and while I was there I went to uh, Sydney Australia for my study abroad and it was from that experience that I actually started a travel blog while I was there mm-hmm that inspired me. Oh, my brother's on. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> and so is Pablo. Hello. Oh, my gosh. I be doing these so often. So, like, people, like, don't always see it or time in because, you know, me, I'm all over the place. But then when there's certain friends, they're like, hi, Kyle. They'll be like, what is she doing on? Like, what is this? And so then they're like, oh, my gosh, let me be part of it. <laughs> so great. Okay. okay. So um, right, go ahead. then when I finished college, I had a journalism degree that I didn't really want to use at that point. So I decided, hey, Angie. So I decided that um, I was going to move to Spain, not knowing anyone. Mm -hmm. as, yeah. as have never taught English before or taught anything, really. I did babysit in college, but that was <laughs> and That's about it, right? <laughs> that's about it. And applied to this program and basically went to Spain not knowing anyone like I said and I my second or third day I got to meet the beautiful Ellie here yeah through, through um Maddie and uh our fr mutual friend Maddie and we ended up living together and going on so many trips together and like Ellie said I guess I'm one of her favorite people but she is also one of my favorite people because uh, she's just such a bright light and a huge motivator, so friendly. So, oh, such a punk. <laughs> <laughs> My brother doesn't even chime in, so like he doesn't even watch this. So exactly. He doesn't need it. He's so happy to be here. <laughs> so rude. So, uh, so rude. Yes, but you are so great. And oh my gosh, thank you so much. One of my best friends now, forever, and I'm so thankful for all the adventures that we had and for you always being down to do things and also getting me out of my comfort zone because a lot of the times in Spain, I, you know, sometimes there was, 
I wasn't really down to go gallivant and your friend Ellie here was <laughs> um, very supportive and encouraging. Oh my gosh. I love you so much. All of the adventures we've already had in the past, but there's so many to come. Riley and I actually had ticket tickets tickets to go see Green Day and Fall Out Boy in Ireland last year in 2020 in June, but we left um Spain in March to go home because of coronavirus. And so she just sent me something that we're actually going next year. So I didn't know we'd be in Ireland, but apparently we already got these tickets. So we're going next year. They rescheduled their concerts. So totally taking advantage of that. I don't mind doing that at all. So I don't mind that either. And we'll do Colorado this summer too. So serious in August, I'm free. So that'd be awesome. Yeah, we have so many things planned, but also there were so many trips that we had planned for what yeah. we thought was going to be the summer, but it's fine. We have to do all of those now. Yep, totally. So what have you learned with quarantine? You've gone through quite a bit of transition. I've learned that about a lot of people, but um, you're one of the people especially has gone through a lot of transition since quarantine has started, starting a new job, moving to a new place. You can share whatever you want to about that. But um, how do you feel like you've been able to adjust to all the transition that you've had to endure during quarantine? So a little just, like, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> I'll give a little backstory. Totally. We found out that um, when the president announced basically that they were shutting everything down in America and we found out that they were shutting everything down in Spain um, and I ended up making the decision and Ellie later ended up making the decision that we were going to go back to the U.S. for safety for right. a of reasons. So when I moved back, I ended up moving back in with my parents. And after a while, I was working part time for an internship, but my job description ch changed quite a, quite a bit. So <laughs> and I wasn't working as much. So started looking for jobs. And it took a solid like six months. And I knew that a uh, way for me to get into the big tech area which was what my goals were so right. that's my goals changed quite a bit <laughs> from journalism to teaching and sure. then marketing was pretty much the route I was going that was the internship I had when I was in college and then when I was in Spain I was still doing that part-time and then when I got back to the U.S. I was doing that as well so I ended up deciding that it would be best if I moved to Colorado with my aunt because she has many connections, many um, people to introduce to. And especially when I'm in front of her face, it's a lot easier to get her to, you know, reach out to the people that I totally. want. Yeah. Long story short, basically, um, I moved here in September. And December rolled around and I actually met one of her former co-workers at Unilever, who was now working at a company that many people are familiar with called Honey, um, which is a browser extension that you download and they automatically apply coupons at checkout. We all need those coupons. Everyone should use Honey. <laughs> so I applied for that job um, after getting to talk to my friend, my aunt's former co-worker. Um, about the opportunity and she was telling me that she loves it so much and that she could put in a recommendation for it network is networking is seriously everything so everybody take note of that but uh I ended up getting the job and now I've been working at Honey for six months and mm -hmm. totally different field I'm actually not really even working in marketing which is what I thought I was going to be doing but I'm more like, I am marketing so I'm talking directly to the merchant it's more um, technical, which I actually enjoy because on top of that, I'm doing my master's in web design and development, which I also started during the pandemic. I just have a lot of things going on. But oh, good thing, though. That you can do anything if you set your mind to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You can. So I think quarantine gave me like motivation instead of being, you know, sad because there's so many horrible things happening in the world. And instead of like, being complacent and there was a bit of time where I was you know during those six months of trying to find a new job it sucked but it, it out. Yeah. yeah just used it as motivation to get that job eventually and I think 
if you keep trying for it and use every resource that you have that you can do anything <laughs> you're so wise <laughs> yes so, it's true no i know it's true and like experience is what sets you up for success and Riley said that I helped her get out of her comfort zone and I'm flattered that you say that both of us agreed on this wine thing too my mom was like oh yeah drink on your chat e and I was like I don't usually do that but like I'm gonna do it (laughs) I will post it bye Morgan love you so much bye Morgan and hey um (laughs) I love that I know so fun um I just lost my train of thought remind me oh she said that I'm able I was able to get her out of her comfort zone but seriously Riley is like I said, such a shining light. Everyone that she meets, she, even when I'm the type of person who's like kind, but I get frustrated in my temper sometimes, I'm like, not doing it. But Riley's the most kind hearted, sweetest, most genuine like person in the entire world. And she invites people in. And like, I have watched her grow into such a, like a beautiful and inspirational young lady who, like I said, I'm so lucky to have as one of my best friends, but it's so exciting to have seen you like in the couple years that we've gotten to know each other so well, to have seen you transform in so many ways, because you have to go through tough things to become better. You know, you have to have lows to reach your highs and now you have so many good things going for you and you know it's something we all have to figure out at different times and different rates, but you are doing such good things and I'm seriously so proud of you. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. I love you so much. <laughs> and I'm also kind to people, guys. I'm not saying I'm not, but Riley's just really, really kind. No. She knows what I mean. <laughs> she knows what I mean. She knows, she knows what I mean. Okay, so Riley shared that she has had some experience. She was living in Sydney, Australia for a while, which is really cool. I know on the bucket list of so many, mine as well, and then also moved to Spain. So she's had quite a bit of opportunity to be abroad. So how would you say, hi, Sabrina, how would you say... <laughs> That, that opportunity when you were abroad has like shaped you and helped you to kind of feel more comfortable in going after what you want now. Oh, totally. Um, so I'll start with Australia. I mean, before I went to Australia, I had traveled quite a bit. I'm very lucky that my family always encouraged us to travel abroad yeah. places, but I was super scared to live in a different country. I had, um, it is scary. Yeah, I had actually, my first semester of my freshman year, I went to San Diego State, which is across the country from New Jersey. And I ended up not liking it, went through super tough times when I was there. But that, ex- and I ended up transferring back to Rutgers in New Jersey. But that experience made the prospect of like living somewhere else so scary because I I am not going to be able to do this I was so nervous that I was going to be like freaking out and you know having the anxiety that plagued me in San Diego and that I was going to miss my family I you know when I went to San Diego and I've been able to do lots of things to learn from that experience but before I went to Australia I was super super scared And to your question of like how it shaped me, basically going to Australia and then to Spain thereafter and living there for an extended amount of time, I proved to myself that like one of my favorite quotes is the um, something along the lines of, I don't remember it exactly, but (laughs) (laughs) this is on and (laughs) that traveling, that whenever you travel, you bring yourself with you no matter where you are it's not a way to change but a way to grow so when San Diego I thought like oh I'm gonna be a this is so dramatic but I was like I'm gonna be a sorority girl and I'm gonna like go to all the parties but that was so not me I thought like me just moving somewhere was gonna be sure me my entire life changing but it was you know I went to Australia finally and proved to myself that like traveling is not, I don't don't expect to go there and change and be different yep. I'm just going as a chance to grow and being open to all the different opportunities you know eventually like worked out and I've met so many people Tia was in here before I don't know if she's still I in that, yeah. <laughs> friends like she lives in Colorado and I see her pretty often and probably could see her more often Tia would agree but <laughs> that's because here in work but I um and then going to Spain after the Australia experience that like fueled me to want to 
see everything. And I would encourage anyone who's just graduating college, or even if you're not, going to Spain, having no background in teaching, and being- Or in Spanish. Or Spanish. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. If I thought, I'm so sorry, our class has never worked. But <laughs> he tried so hard. Great. <laughs> Trying to teach me how to speak Spanish. But um, <laughs> that it just like now sure, better. everything for the rest of your life, like doing these traveling and you are exposed to so much diversity. And I feel like it's so worth it. If you can, like all you need is a college degree. Just go teach in Spain for a year. Like, totally. you'll I wish I stayed longer. Did that answer your question? I feel like I kind of trailed off. No, no. I mean, I think the biggest thing, and I agree with you, I would say this too, is if you, if I'm ever not looking down or looking at you, it's just because I'm taking notes of what you're saying. But um, I think that everyone should make it happen. And I know like everyone's not in the same situation financially or for all different reasons as to like why you don't do it right away. You know, you might be hesitant and scared of doing something like that by yourself. But I think the best part of traveling is the people. Is yeah. like you just are exposed to like, not everyone's life is the same. We all come from different cultures and um, speak different languages, but like how similar we all are too. And Madrid and like Spain is like, it looks like you're on another planet. Like everything about Europe is so different than the United States. Um, so no, I think that's perfect. I think that everyone should, and it's such a bummer when you meet people and they're like, I'm 50 and I've never gotten to do some of this traveling and realistically a lot of people don't get to but you just have to prioritize it in your life because it really is like culture and exposure is so important totally and I know that I mean I have a lot of friends too who haven't been out of the country or even yeah. been to the other side of the U.S. like never been to California I'm from New right. Jersey but like you know never been even to just the other side of our own world right right it is so important to prioritize it i mean i know and ellie i'm pretty sure you had a similar situation but when we went to spain we didn't really have like money we were none guys i've never been so poor in my life <laughs> we were like, we were yeah what we had saved up was enough to put like first month's rent down on an apartment in a secure which we just got back last week <laughs> yeah we just got back finally We've been home a year plus yeah. and we got our security deposit back over a grand last week. So that's lovely. Two weeks ago. And he meant all good, all good hopes. Like he meant it. Okay. It's just economy. It's fine. Yes. Economy. He was, he was struggling because of COVID our landlord and we were very, he was great. It's totally great. We got it. Yeah. Sorry. He also, you know, assisted um, in getting all the wine bottles that we had accumulated out of there. So, you know, we could give him some time. God bless. <laughs> but, um, uh, what was I saying with that? Basically that, uh, girl, I don't know. I lost my train of thought too. The people and, uh, da, 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 oh, yeah. going for, no money, money, money. That was what right. I is like. We had only just, just enough to survive on like to get a place. And at, after that, it was like credit card and like month to month, month to month. Me using Riley's credit card sometimes. So <laughs> back every time guys but, <laughs> of course <laughs> it's only once but I literally almost was like oh <laughs> but you know like I think that was just proof that like if you have motivation like you're getting paid by this teaching job that we did I mean I'm just speaking directly to our situation yep. was you know we did get paid and eventually we're able to like travel to all these places but it's like even if you're broke you can do it you can totally make it work yeah. you can do it yeah. All you need is like 2,000 US dollars and you're maybe a little more than that to start. I, I, I Everyone moment. loves you though. Um, remember, you know, Roberto, who was on one of my chat and we met him and yeah. so him and I are like really good friends. We talk all the time and we're actually going to do Spanish lessons. And he saw me post that you were going to do this with me. And he was like, oh my gosh, Ellie, how's she doing? And I talked to Tyler recently too. Oh and my. he's like, I, just everyone. It's like, there's so many cool people that we meet from awesome places. And, um, yeah, everyone can make it work. There's always a way. Exactly. There's always a way. That's something I encourage people is like, if you're feeling like you want to live the YOLO life, live the YOLO life. 
I know. And don't stop just because you have kids or don't stop because something gets in the way because I feel like life is so short. You should be living your YOLO life and traveling and doing things until you die. I'm going to be bringing my kids with me wherever I go. Shoot. Same. Shoot. Shoot. <laughs> There's too many people I want to meet and like experience and want them to be a part of it too. So seriously, I'm so excited for it. Yeah. Okay, so talking about how we were poor, Riley, you know that gave me so much anxiety because I've never been so poor in my life. And maybe that. Never. <laughs> nunca, nunca. So how you're really good with traveling on a budget. Riley's definitely good at getting on top of things. And that was kind of going to be, I think that is what I titled this, was traveling yeah. on a budget. But there's so many other, like, things to use. So we have to talk about it all. <laughs> um, but, yeah, traveling on a budget. Do you have any tips for that? I, for sure, am the type of person who likes to ball out and like just experience everything. But unfortunately I got in trouble with that because I didn't have the money all the time to do that. So like being back in the U S and working, it's been beneficial that I can, but then, you know, you still like, then you realize everything's so expensive here in comparison. So do you want to talk about um, how to budget traveling or like kind of how you set that out for yourself and sure. for other people? I actually was talking to my aunt's boyfriend's daughter about this the other other day because she's traveling to Croatia and doing like a year with one of her friends. Amazing. Basically to start, my biggest thing is like plan in advance. Um, when it comes to like a living or not living, like a place to stay, my biggest tip would be Hostel World, hostelworld.com, the Cheap. app cheap and also you can reserve it in advance and only pay like a down payment so say it's twenty dollars a night for a 16 person room that's where the friends come in that's where the friends come that's in that's where the culture is experienced exactly you're staying in these hostels you're meeting people and say it's twenty dollars a night so it accumulates to like what 200 say you're staying there for like a week you, all you have to put down while you're waiting is what like 10 percent? like you pay like the first night's rent so and you cancel up until like i think a week before so definitely hostel world is like a biggest thing and mm -hmm. going is like sometimes they we went to i've been to a couple sketchy hostels i would say but it brings not only the cheapness but the people as well like you said like we've we met many many people from at, all over the world from all not over the just world. europe like from europe from the u.s from australia from uh, south america literally every i think just not antarctica <laughs> and basically everybody who goes and stays in a hostel is or wants to hang out as well so like even if you solo travel or like it's just the two of you you can go to this hostel and like everybody wants to do the touristy things everybody wants to party and drink if that's your thing so yeah, you totally. people who do want to do those things that you want to do and you can find like a community of people at these hostels one mm -hmm. thing about hostels that i do now differently or i would always prioritize is i think prioritizing a hostel with a good location is key even if it's a little more expensive i think it's worth it for the train bills that, or the different transportation costs that you would. Totally. And I always would um, like research on Pinterest, like best hostels in, like when we went to Budapest, like best hostels in Budapest. And I would find like the ones that were the most high rated. And then I would end up booking those because most people said that they were in good locations or that I had a good vibe or it was clean. So I would always prioritize that. And then for me personally, I would prioritize um, being in like a smaller room. Like, yes, the bigger ones were fun with like six people, but I feel like sometimes it's hard. So like maybe now I would pay a little extra to have like a smaller group of people. But I um, definitely think that like prioritizing a location when you're uh, booking a hostel is like key to even if it's more expensive, it will be budget friendly after a trip because you're saving money by like being able to walk places versus taking a train everywhere. No, I totally agree with that. Yeah. So in terms of budget travel, I would say that's one of my biggest ones. Um, Agreed. I think that's because the hotel and accommodations is like the biggest thing. Food's usually not that expensive anywhere. 
Exactly. So on top of that. In Europe, we haven't been everywhere yet. Yeah, we haven't been everywhere. And, and only was, certain places in Europe, because some places it is more expensive. So you also, I think, should definitely, like, research the place that you're going before you go, because some countries, in Europe at least, are super cheap, and then some aren't. But mm -hmm. then that could be in Asia, like, anywhere you go, right? Exa and I think doing what I said with the Pinterest, like, totally. That's so bloggers who write, like, going <laughs> to Vienna on a budget, or, like... Right. Vienna and they write these like beautifully well written well well written <laughs> has, like, you sound like me right now I can't talk <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> have beautifully well well written tips and like itineraries even and that is another thing that I think helps save budget wise is having some sort of itinerary and like planning your expenses prior, like pre-booking museums or walking tours that you want to do is yes, it's spending money. And yes, you can do like the walking tour by yourself without spending money. Totally. But I would say like prioritizing those even before the trip will then save because it could be more expensive. Like when you, or, or it could not even be booked, but at least you know that you're like not just moseying around and you're oh, Maddie's here. Maddie, I know, I saw it too. <laughs> so um, but yeah, they like oh booking it also helps save a lot of money. No, I agree. I yeah. agree. But at least I could voice a reason. I, was, I would be like, so is this like a good decision or like no? <laughs> But I also think, like, everybody's different, but prioritizing. Um, Maddie, you're going to be on next. If we could do three people, we would include you right now. I don't think you could do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. You I would be so happy. Oh, my gosh, I love you so much. Um, <laughs> but, like, I'm not a super museum-friendly uh -huh. female, unless it's... <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I said it like that unless it's like interactive like there's this cool one in Chicago where you touch everything and it's so much fun and I like that kind of thing but I'm just not a museum person like yeah. even if it's like a really big deal like they're beautiful it's fun but I'm good in 15 30 minutes like good but some of my friends want to stay there for hours and that's great but you also have to like you know kind of buddy up I feel like with people that like want to do the same things as you and like prioritize what's important to you because some touristy things are wonderful but some touristy things you can live without totally and it's like you pick and choose and stuff does get expensive a lot of it is free yep a lot of it is free in Europe which is something pristine nothing is free in the U.S. ever Yep. Nope. We don't know what that means. What does that mean? I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I think that's really good. Yeah. I was going to say something else. Um, comes to, I guess, like going from country to country, because this is something that I was also talking to my aunt's boyfriend's daughter about was like, <laughs> you, you know, like <laughs> bus versus flight. Um, not the flight. Not the flight. Okay. The flight. Not Ryanair. Ryanair sucks, even though, yes, they got the 30 euro, 15 euro ticket. I know everybody who's going to listen to it. If you want to travel, you're going to want to use the Ryanair. And maybe you should as, <laughs> like, I guess you experience it to know that you hate it. <laughs> For us. It's just a little intimidating, you know? It's, it's a lot. It's a lot different than U.S. flight travels. And, you know, it could potentially like ruin a trip because you're four hours delayed or you're so uncomfortable or tired because it's like a morning flight it's just like or you didn't pay on time or you didn't check in on time so it's fifty dollars or a hundred dollars per person before you leave and you can only bring you can only bring like the smallest tiniest bag it's nuts yeah you have to pay more if you want to do a carry-on so it's like at that point now, looking back, I would just pay for, like, the more expensive flight to make sure I have, like, Agreed. included. And, like, yeah, I get it. If you do have if you fit everything through your purse, which is basically what it is, half the time they don't even let you bring a backpack on. That's considered, like, a carry-on. Yeah, it's crazy, guys. So you've been 
Good, yeah. good. What you need to just think about it. What's really important, especially like a lot of times you're doing weekend trips. I guess it depends because we were working, so we only got to do short trips. That's actually something, Riley, that I've thought about a lot. Is it was great that we got to do those short trips, but traveling is so tiring. I don't think I would put myself in a position. I mean, I guess I still travel on weekends sometimes, but I don't really think I'd put myself in too many other positions where I'm doing all that traveling for such a short amount of time. No, I mean I totally agree. Is like I think that. It's good to experience and us living there and being having ex access to all these countries. Like um, we're so close. Flight or like a four hour train ride or bus ride. Like it was yeah. so that we took advantage of it. But totally. if I were in the same position, I also would like prioritize being in a place for a long period of time versus like just being there for two days, which is a lot of the time what we were doing because we were traveling during the weekends. So I like prioritizing being in a place for a little longer amount of time Agreed. Um, and it is super tiring and like not a flight it's a train that's like four hours long and that and is you work the next day yes and then you work the next day that was the thing we were working the next day so it wasn't it wasn't fun <laughs> but you know and we also went home last year Riley and I went home for Christmas and then flew back and then flew out of the country like it was a million everything yeah, I miss flying. You've been flying a couple times. I haven't flown since I came back from Madrid at all. Really? See, mm -hmm. that's... Oh, Maddie has a question. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the only answer we would possibly give, so... Yeah, One of my favorite parts about traveling with Maddie was... And I just... She's so excited about life and about um, experiencing <laughs> parts of a country and specifically, like... Um, let's, let's cathedrals and churches and the <laughs> places. Oh I have God. never done that if Maddie wasn't there to encourage and that those were some of my favorite places and favorite part of traveling. Favorite. We got to have experiences in these beautiful places that I wouldn't have had if I didn't have a person like Maddie there. And this goes into the diversity everyone's diverse if you hang out with the two people that you know from your hometown then you're not oh being through every meeting we had with hostile roommates yes it's like, <laughs> maddie said i'm not coming with you <laughs> maddie the oh importance of diversity is key even if it's like someone who just lives in a different state as you or has different life experiences oh our pizza that was a good <gasps> time we didn't, we didn't i'm not even gonna do it there but our dear friend Maddie here she she got to see the lady she's seen pizza <laughs> yes um Maddie do you remember when I don't know where the heck we were when we oh it was when we were in Valencia when we went down that um Maddie was also our roommate in Spain just yeah. for anyone who doesn't know she's another friend that we met in Spain she was my first friend actually that I met in Spain and then one of Riley's too and then Meg, oh my gosh we need Meg that's all we need <laughs> quad back um remember when we went down that tongue when we were when we went to Valencia with Margo, we went to this, we were walking to go meet her at the science building. And there was like this, I hope she's still on this. And there was this like, human playground. And it was like a person's body. So they're like laying down and Maddie, I have a video of her like sliding down its tongue. Oh my god, that's so cute. Oh my gosh, I miss you guys so much. It's so crazy because I feel like life gets so busy. But it's like you guys are the type of friends that I just like have like, long term whenever we talk. I'm just like, obsessed with you that's never gonna change you guys are always my people it's fine even <laughs> yeah. though I'm sad we don't talk all the time but like everyone gets so busy it's like a day seven weeks go by and it seems like nothing yeah well as soon as we reconnect it's just like so quick and just yeah. about like and this is another amazing perk of traveling and doing the things that we do is like I went with no expectations I was like I was expecting well I wasn't expecting, but I was ready for the possibility that I was going to make friends, <laughs> that I was going to be all by myself and just traveling the world alone. And that was one of the biggest things is like, I did not expect to now meet these lifelong friends that will be in my life forever. And it's crazy that just, so serious. oh, or like a year ago, two years ago, like, well, it was a year ago, a year ago, we didn't know each other. Yeah. I mean, it's, like, crazy, and it's so cool because all of us went to Spain for the same reason, to, like, 
find ourselves and to venture for something greater and to go outside of our comfort zones and to be, you know, better versions of ourselves. But like, we wanted adventure. We wanted something new. And like, all of us were there for the same reason. And everyone who we met was great. Like, there's definitely people who are going to stick around and who like are friends while you're there. They're cool. But like, you know, you don't need them long term. But we have a group of like six of us that are just like so amazing, such a blessing. And we don't really fight. Whatever we do, it's just like, <laughs> we're like not even we don't really fight. It's like, shut up. You're being annoying right now. Like, <laughs> I don't think any of us even. Uh, oh yes, and we did move to the, the to Spain to live on the same street as a. <laughs> we lived on the same street as a brothel. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Okay. Is there, is there, did I miss anything in that question? I no, feel like sorry. I get, I get so happy. I just like forget. No, no. I think, I think that was perfect. I think that was great. I'm trying to remember, like any other tips? Well. I mean, taking buses is a super good option, though Ellie and I did try and take a bus to Portugal, and we may not have missed the bus. And We there got to participate in Thanksgiving. It was fun. Yeah, we, we literally <laughs> missed it. Like, we actually... Wait, hold on. Maddie requested... Is she allowed... Can you go live with three people? I don't know. Try. I don't want to hang up on you. You always put me back in. Maddie, oh my gosh, if we can go live with three people. No. <laughs> I don't, I feel like you can't. <laughs> but either. Oh my god! <laughs> Hi, Maddie's friend from Spain. I was literally <laughs> teaching a ballet class, but I saw this and I had to get on Instagram. And all my girls were like, what is going on? Hi, guys. Oh my gosh, this is us. the happiest day of my life. Us. I didn't know you could do this. I didn't even know it was an option. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi guys. I look terrible. <laughs> Maddie, I okay. love you so much. Anyways, I love you both so much. I have to actually go do my job now, but I just had to jump on. I love you so much. Love you so much. <laughs> Bye. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> yeah. Bye. 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 She's okay. I don't know how to hang how she oh okay. Okay, perfect. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. I didn't know you could do that. Um no, I think, yeah, it definitely, there's so many things you have to figure out. It's a completely different experience. Um, what would you say? So you're pretty good about planning and getting things ready in regards to going on trips. I personally am a very like wing it last minute kind of human, but you like to plan. So do you have any tips or advice in regards to like planning a trip or like figuring out where you want to go? Because I feel like you always had some sort of plan. You're like, okay, y'all, we're going to go here and here and here. I hope you have fun. Good luck. You yeah. know, like, I feel like you always had some kind of, like, idea. I, but for yeah. me, that's not a thing in my brain. When I would decide I want to go a place, say, like, when my friends and I went to New Zealand, what we did was I always started by, like, looking up on Pinterest or, like, from a travel blog. You know, I would look up or like an Instagrammer, I would always look up, you know, itinerary and so-and-so place. And then I would take that as like um, an outline, I guess, to mm -hmm. do myself. And I would look up these different places specifically on Google Maps. And oh, I, would, <laughs> I would make like a thing on Google Maps and put in every single place that I wanted to go to. She's a planner, guys, seriously. And then from there, I would map out from our hostel, like, where these certain places were. So say, for example, we were going to London and wanted to go to, like, Buckingham Palace and then also go to, uh, like, the Abbey Road or whatever that, like, the Beatles went on. I would yeah. see, like, how close they Downtown were. Downtown Abbey? Downtown Abbey? Downtown Abbey, yes, that one. I would look and see, like, how close they were to each other. And then how far, if there were certain things that were like in a certain area, plan for one day to be like exploring that area. And then for the next day to be exploring the other part of London where right. those are. And kind of like splitting it up that way and maximizing each day by coordinating what places were in each location. So it's smart. So then you're not going all over the place or into the same area two times. Exactly. And it's like helpful with transportation costs and stuff because a lot of the time, like, those are the big things that cost money is, you know, going on the tube or going on a bus to try and get from each place. Right. Pay for it every time, so. 
No, and there's a lot of things that if you guys have your visa or if you go abroad, like we went to France and Paris and we went to the Louvre and we got them for free because we had our visas. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that they actually have perks for young people. And I guess just people in general to go for free. Exactly, yeah. So um, definitely when it comes to planning, like researching the locations, prioritize the place that you want to see and where they are and when is the best day to go to them. Uh, so I would always start out with the Pinterest, writing down the places I want to go in that location, and then Google Maps, and that's how I would plan. And then if I'm really getting frisky, if I really wanted to go, <laughs> I would make an Excel document. <laughs> she would. Oh my gosh, I have so many copies of Excel documents. Really no joke. Specifically, when my friends and I ripped the South Island of New Zealand, I basically did like an hour by hour play by play. Everyone should travel with Riley. And if things change, she's flexible. Because yeah. I think some people, like, it, I think that's helpful. And if things change, then it just, like, doesn't work. Like, they're not okay with it. But, like, at least you're flexible. You're just trying to, like, have ideas on what to do. And I always tell myself, like, okay, if I had a plan to do something in London and I don't get to, I'm going to come back. Like, this isn't the last time I will ever be in their places. There's some places that I probably won't go to again but or don't feel like I have the need to but the right. one I do I'm not limiting myself to knowing that I'll be able to go back there in the future and you prioritize like those things that you really want to go to and go first so the other stuff is just like extra fluff exactly so definitely recommend like writing everything down and if you're really trying to like maximize your trip even if it's two days like you have to write everything out and you have to see like location wise what's totally. the it can become easily become a huge mess easily easily let me plan it mess <laughs> yeah like easily become a mess of like not being able to juggle everything oh it's a lot yeah it can Wait. be overwhelming especially when it's like some places have a lot more to offer than others too and so sometimes there is so much you want to see and you only have four days so you really gotta pick and choose what's important exactly yeah so those are my tips for that when it comes to planning i would definitely sure plan because it maximizes and it helps with the budget in the end it does no entirely and then you can just end up saving some of that extra money because you didn't spend too much craziness and go somewhere else exactly, exactly. we need to plan a trip oh we're gonna hang out in the next couple weeks yeah exactly well i'm going back to new jersey so that's time. what i'm saying so in june seriously we could plan a weekend in june that'd be awesome or in july even yeah I'm working, but I'm free on all the weekends, so just let me know when. We'll go see Meg, too. Oh, my gosh, Riley, I can't wait. I'm not even kidding. Also <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, so happy that that worked with Maddie, because I was, like, hoping it wouldn't hang up on you. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, so, like I said, you've grown so much as a person through so much experience, and I feel like I've been around to, like, watch so much of it, and I'm so, like, excited for you to continue watching you blossom and grow into the amazing person that you are, Cass, to grow into the amazing person that you are. So what would be three words at this point in your life? This one's kind of hard for people sometimes, but what would be three words that you would use to describe yourself? And instead of thinking about what other people would describe you as, think of what you would describe yourself as. Okay. And then I'll do three for you too. I would say I mean, a big, that's all we can do. I would say um, flexible, or maybe not, how about open? Ambitious and open, always open to new experiences. And I would say flexible too, but then that's getting, I feel like my third word should be different. And, and tell me why, don't forget that part. I didn't say that. Oh, well, so ambitious because always willing to go on adventures. Never have I felt that I had limit in life um there was times where you know my anxiety would like strip me from thinking that things were possible but after a lot of hard work in therapy people i was able to see now that you know ambition and like knowing that you can do thing that yeah. would be like i feel like i have no no scared, not scared to go anywhere, not scared to quit my job if I don't like it tomorrow. I do like it, so I'm not going to quit. But say like I wanted to and I was unhappy, like ready to always take that jump for what it means um, for me to be happy. So I guess that's where ambition comes in. When it comes to being 
being open, I would say that very open to like, I mean, you even said like, if things change, it's fine. It's not something to get hooked up on open also in the aspect of like, I love to learn about new people. I love to learn in general, always listening to podcasts and reading and watching documentaries on Netflix that make me super sad, including, including Seaspiracy that. I haven't seen that one. Oh my God. Never even eating. I I hate all humans. That's what I'm getting out of that. But, (laughs) and then a third word, I would say is empathetic. I feel like I feel everything that others feel and it sometimes affects me so much and I've gotten better at that. But I would say yes, empathetic, open and ambitious. No, I agree. (laughs) What? What? (laughs) I agree with all of those in for an assortment of reasons. I wrote three about you as well. Oh, did you? I did. I just came up with them. I didn't do it beforehand. So this is real deal. All right. So the first word I said is inspiring. I think that you go wholeheartedly and like full force after anything that you want. And I think that, you know, in the time that we've known each other, I've watched you really have to figure it out. You're like, do I want to be a journalist? Do I want to teach? Like, you know, do I want to go home? Do I want to stay in Spain? Like so many different things, but you never, ever fail to go after the things you want and like you always end up on top even if you have like things that are hard in the time being you always make it work and so I think that you're inspiring and you've done a lot of stuff like on your own which I know is hard for a lot of people so I think you're amazing for that um I also said driven it kind of like all goes like you said ambitious driven you just like work really really hard Riley likes to drink wine she's (laughs) goofy she likes to play like she is joking around but like she puts on her glasses and when she has to work, she's not playing around. Like she works very, very hard and like had never taught before, but like the kids who were at school with her, especially Evan, I don't remember. Just oh. Coral, Coral, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember the rest of their names. <laughs> but they loved her more than anything. And she'd come home with these stories and just like the, like she was wearing her heart on her sleeve, but also just like was so happy to be doing what she was doing. So she was driven to go after things, especially when like you're put in a position that's like something completely new, which is really inspiring also. And then the last word I said is heart. And that's not really a character trait, but I just feel like you are the heart of like people and just like a community and like the things that you do. I visited Riley um, last year after we came home from Spain and just like her family and like the friends and like the people that's around her love her so much. And like, I, I genuinely fit in like immediately, like felt so loved and had such a good time because Riley is the heart of everything. She brings people together and that's what I aspire to do all the time. But like she brings people together and loves people. And it's just like, you know, like people gravitate towards you because you're kind and because you mean the things you say and because you're like a little bit of a punk sometimes, but it's fine. And like, (laughs) just love you. I love you too, but I mean it like, and I've watched you grow um, in so many ways. And that's all that you are going to continue to do. And you should be really, really proud of yourself because a lot has happened. I feel like so many people have dwelled on 2020 and thought of it as such like a negative time. And it was hard because we all had to learn to adjust to something different. But I mean, I think a lot of good stuff has come from it, right? Yeah, I mean, definitely for the both. I would say so. I would encourage everyone to look at the positives of things and I know a lot of times it is hard especially if things are so bad but there's always a silver lining if you can find it in yourself to see it always gotta find it sometimes you do have to search a little deeper you know some people gotta dive in and sometimes I feel like it's hard to acknowledge those things about yourself exactly yeah not finding the good um so we're gonna kind of finish up i love you so much but i have a couple more like questions so we've explained and shared that you've grown a lot and just like learned a lot about yourself so what would you say is the area in which you've like grown the most or just like learned the most about yourself over the it doesn't even have to be just quarantine just over the last couple years because i know you just have you've blossomed into such an awesome person always been awesome but you have to figure stuff out at times all of us you know yeah Um, I would say that the area I've grown 
and I want to say this is since high school because I always had an issue with caring about what other people thought to the point, which isn't a bad thing. And that's something I've learned is like caring about people and being empathetic is not a bad thing. No, it's, and, no, it's not. And, but I used to care so much about what other people thought to the point where it would stop me from doing things. Yeah. They, I mean, my parents, for example, love them to death, but they thought going to Spain was like the stupidest thing. They were like, you should get a job. You should become a productive member of society. But instead you're choosing to gallivant and go to a place with no plans, nowhere to live, no friends. No it's money. That's the experience of our life. <laughs> Yes, exactly. It ended up being great. And they were super supportive once I ended up deciding and explaining my reasonings why. Sure. But when I was in high school and when I was even in the early years of college, like that was something that if my parents said that's stupid, that I would have listened to them. Yeah. Or if the boyfriend I had at the time said that that's dumb, like I'm doing this, then I also wouldn't have done it. So one of the things that I've learned is like there's a balance between caring about what other people think and doing whatever you want and doing what's best for you mm -hmm. so I do care and I do love the people in my life and take everything with a grain of salt or even like I used to let like posting on social media posts, like I didn't want people to judge me and I still sometimes like don't post yeah. I want someone to like or I care that someone thinks like maybe the picture that I posted is weird, but there's like a balance between like doing whatever you want and like respecting the people that you love and vice versa of like doing whatever you want, even if disrespects yeah. <laughs> to an extent, I guess disrespects are like, they don't agree with it, but that is like the biggest area that I've grown probably in the past like five years. And it especially when you want to live an exciting life where you're traveling and moving to like out of your parents house and taking on a new job like you have to be okay with people hating on you sometimes you know like you have to be okay with people not supporting you and I feel like your parents love you so much you know they oh. had to figure it out and it's probably because my dad I feel like at first is kind of hesitant like dude what but I yep. feel like they're just scared for you too they're like what yeah. are you doing like they're looking out for you and it's like societal expectations like they're looking out for you but it's not with the intention of hurting you but then sometimes it does hurt a little bit exactly. and so they have to figure that out for themselves but most of the time when people are going to tear you down they have insecurities or they wish they could do what you're doing so i'm so glad that you came because seriously at first when i met riley i was like i don't think we'll be friends i, like, <laughs> I don't know why i was like eh, i don't know if she gave me a look or like what it was but i was like mm, don't think so now she's like one of my favorite humans so like what do i do now now you're stuck forever <laughs> in my wedding oh my gosh yes in the wedding <laughs> But Riley, I love you so much. Like I said, I'm so excited to continue watching you grow. I will tag your Instagram because I'll put this. So all of my chatties now go on YouTube and then I'll also keep it on my Instagram and IGTV. So if, I'll tag your Instagram if you're comfortable so people can yep. check you out and everything. And then also, do you just have any tips for people who are like nervous to go after their dreams to just kind of push them to go forward? I would say, remember the quote that I said in the beginning is that traveling is not like you're not doing it to change it's a way to grow it's not going to change the bar when you go to this place if you think like oh i want to escape kind of thing either way you're never going to escape you're always going to have yourself so my recommendation is take every trip as a chance to grow versus uh like trying to change yourself because you're always going to have you so everywhere you go is just a chance to get your to know yourself better but not to change yourself i think we you're amazing <laughs> <laughs> it's a chance to grow it's an opportunity to become better i think that every uh year we should plan like a week that all of us just go away somewhere doesn't matter where we go but like, we should do a week and just like travel the world every year as we all start getting like big people jobs and you know start to create this foundation for our lives um you know we're gonna have to prioritize one prioritize and I know you do too like even if it's once a year just spending time with the each other because we you know have these bonds that are so different from every other relationship in our lives like yeah. my I grew up with in high school cannot understand the experience 
and the relationship that we have because we've experienced such different things with each other. So to make sure to foster those relationships and do like a trip, like you said, or to even, you know, meet up, even if it's just in one of our hometowns. Totally, 100%. Like, so important to foster those relationships that are unique instead of being complacent from like, or settling into something that there's so much more possibility, if that makes sense. Yeah, and never give up on the good people in your life. Like people, there's a reason behind everything and like reason behind the people that are placed in your life. I feel so blessed with all of you guys and Spain as an opportunity for us to grow and learn and live and love. And I can't wait to go back, honestly. We'll have to, I feel like it'll be next year. It's, I don't think it's going to be 20. We have a lot of unfinished business in Spain. So much, so That's much. In España, so much unfinished business. Maybe you should take the Spanish class with me. We can get better. Mm. At this point, <laughs> I really do want to. It's so important. I mean, there's a lot of people in the U.S. and in general that speak Spanish, too. So there's so many people that, like, would benefit from us knowing fluent Spanish, too. No, I agree. It's so important to keep these languages alive because even though we did go to Spain to be teaching English and it's such an advantage for these kids to know this language because it is turning into the universal language, I guess, but it's also so important to know these other languages to foster the culture and like continue it and not like Americanize or English. English Don't gravitate towards so many American friends. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Which is something all of our roommates were American and we made friends who were Spanish, but they all wanted to practice their English. So like we weren't <laughs> speaking Spanish ever. Exactly. And that's what people say is like, oh, you went to Spain and like don't know Spanish. It was like because literally everyone speaks English. Yeah. And you're True. speaking English all day to your students because they don't want you to speak Spanish. And I was yep. listening for so many of them were fluent. Just like at this point, I'd give up. But if I were to do it again, I would try and prioritize learning the language. I think we should go for an extended time again, right? At some I, point. Even if it's like, we're so young. We're literally so young. I agree. So much time. I love you so much. I'm seriously so thankful for you. And thank you for doing this. So many great tips. And just like, I keep saying it, but so excited to continue watching you grow and to have seen the amazing growth that you made already. So I love you so much. <laughs> Ditto. I can't but you do. <laughs> okay, I'll text you right now, okay? Yeah, text you. Bye. I love that. Bye. <laughs>